my Gavanin folks. Today we have the ridiculously awesome integral that is the integral from 0 to 1 half of log zeta x over zeta 1 minus x dx. And I picked this thing up from the Instagram page quadrademan or quadrademan. I'm not sure how he pronounces his Instagram handle, but wow, this guy manages one hell of a math page. It's absolutely brilliant. Lots of cool math over there. And his page is actually criminally underrated. So do drop him a follow on Instagram. And while you're at it, drop me a follow as well, because I post all my workings over there as well. Okay, cool. So how should we begin? Intuitively, one might think that we should start with the log properties, but there's a better way to start this. And that is by invoking the functional equation for the zeta function. So we know that zeta x equals 2 to the x times pi to the x minus 1 times sine of pi x over 2 gamma 1 minus x times zeta 1 minus x terribly. Sorry about that. And that looks much better. And the cool thing about this is that now we have a ratio of zeta x and zeta 1 minus x. So zeta x over zeta 1 minus x equals 2 to the x times pi to the x minus 1 times sine of pi x over 2 times gamma 1 minus x. And all we need to do now is take the logarithm and then integrate from 0 to 1 half. So this implies that the target integral i is now the integral from 0 to 1 half of log 2 to the x plus log pi to the x minus 1 plus log sine of pi x over 2 plus log gamma 1 minus x dx. And of course, we can invoke the linearity of the integration operator and some more log properties to get log 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 half of x dx plus log pi times the integral from 0 to 1 half of x minus 1 dx plus integral 0 to 1 half log sine of pi x over 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1 half of log gamma 1 minus x. And for reference purposes, I'm going to call this thing over here as i sub 1 and this thing over here as i sub 2. And to evaluate the first couple integrals, they are pretty much elementary. So this implies that i here equals log 2 times x squared over 2 with the limits being 0 and 1 half. So the square of 1 half is a quarter, so I have 1 over 8 plus log pi, and I have x squared over 2 minus x. Again, limits are 0 and 1 half. For the 1 half limit, we get 1 over 8, and for the 0 limits, again, we get a 0, so that's 1 over 8 minus 1 half. And how exactly do we add fractions? I'm not sure. I'm not very good at math. So I'm just going to deus ex machina this and say that this is probably somewhere around negative 3 over 8. So negative sign over there. And then 3 over 8 over there. And now to evaluate the integrals i sub 1 and i sub 2. For i sub 1, I'd like to start with the transformation that is letting pi x over 2 equal u, which implies that dx equals 2 over pi du. And this further implies that i sub 1 is now the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times 1 half is pi over 4. So we have log sine u du, and of course a factor of 2 over pi outside. Now to evaluate this integral, we'll invoke the series expansion for log sine u. So we know that log sine u equals negative log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of cosine of 2k u over k. So all we need to do is integrate this thing from 0 to 1 half. So this implies that the integral from 0 to pi over 4, that is, of log sine u du equals negative log 2 integral 0 to pi over 4 du, which of course is just an interval of length pi over 4. So we should have negative pi over 4 log 2 minus the integral, that is to say the sum, because I've switched up the order of the integration and summation operator. So we have the sum over k of 1 over k times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine of 2 ku du. Terribly sorry about that, which is of course another elementary integral. 
So we have negative pi over 4 log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k. And integrating cosine gives us sine of 2ku over 2k. Limits are 0 and pi over 4, which are pretty interesting. So we have negative pi over 4 log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity. 1 over, rather wait, I can take out the 1 half term, that is to say factored outside, and I have k squared in the denominator, and we have sine of 2k times pi over 4 would be equal to k times pi over 2, which is interesting, minus sine of 0, sine of 0 is of course 0, so we'll not bother to even write that thing. But what exactly is sine of 2k over 2? Now, note something. Sine of k pi over 2 equals 0 if k equals 2n, and sine of 2n minus 1 times pi over 2 if k is, well, 2n minus 1. And what exactly is sine of 2n minus 1 times pi over 2? This thing should be equal to negative 1 to the k, n of course being an integer, sorry about that, that is actually negative 1 to the n minus 1, no wait, I mean, I'm terribly sorry about that, it is supposed to be n minus 1, of course can't deviate from the script. Anyway, so what exactly were we talking about? Oh yeah, we were analyzing the sum here, so that means we can reject all the non-zero term, all of the zero terms, that is, that is for the case of k equal to 2n and replace k by 2n minus 1. So this implies that i sub 1 equals negative pi over 4 log 2 minus 1 half times the sum over k from 1 to infinity. Rather, wait, let's rename the index variable to n. And we have negative 1 to the n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 whole thing squared. And what on earth is this thing? Well, this is in fact Catalan's constant, top g. So this implies that i sub 1 equals something I'm missing, definitely something I'm missing. And yes, indeed, this is not in fact i sub 1. i sub 1 is in fact this integral times 2 over pi. So I should probably just replace this thing and then say that whatever integral I was evaluating, that is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of log sine u du. And you may have noticed that I write my 4s in a very weird way. Anyway, so this implies that i sub 1 equals 2 over pi times the result. So that means the pi's cancel out here, 2 will cancel out over there, and we should get negative log 2 over 2 minus another 2 cancelling out, and we have a lovely looking result that is Catalan's constant over pi. And now for the evaluation of i sub 2. Now for evaluating the integral i sub 2, we'll first make some transformations. That is, we're going to let 1 minus x equal t, which implies that dx equals negative dt, and that the target integral i sub 2 is now the integral from 1 minus 0, which is 1, to 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 half log gamma t dt. But there's a negative sign outside, which we get rid of immediately by switching up the limits of integration, so that we have the integral from 1 half to 1 of log gamma t dt. And what exactly is the integral from 1 half to 1 even equal to? Well, that should be equal to the integral from... 0 to 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 half of log gamma t dt. And we can evaluate both of these integrals using this really cool formula we derived in a previous video, link in the description box and my Instagram page as well, again. Now, this is the second time I'm plugging in my Instagram into this video, but anyway, the more the merrier. So yeah, there's a video proof via the YouTube link and a write a proof via the Instagram link. What on earth were we doing? Oh yeah, we were evaluating these two integrals. So I'm going to reference this amazing formula for the integral from 0 to alpha of log gamma t dt. This thing equals alpha times 1 minus alpha over 2 plus 
let me check my notes. Oh yeah, it's alpha over two times log two pi plus alpha minus one times log gamma alpha minus log Barnes G function of alpha. And this thing looks absolutely insane. And now for the evaluation. The integral from zero to one of log gamma t dt does not even require the use of this formula or any fancy looking formula that is. All we need to do is invoke some symmetry and then make use of Euler's beautiful reflection formula and you're home free. You should get one half of log two pi. Now, what about the integral from zero to one half of log gamma t dt? This thing should equal one half times one minus one half, which we know to be one half. So one half squared is a quarter. A quarter multiply that by one over two is, well, one over eight. Then we have, again, one quarter times log two pi plus one half minus one is negative one half. And we're left with log gamma one half. And we know what gamma one half is. That is root pi. And making use of log properties, this is just one quarter of the natural logarithm of pi minus the logarithm of Barnes g of one half. And now we're about to reference a really cool looking result involving the Barnes g function. And that is the result for log g of one half. This thing involves, again, let me check my notes to make sure I don't mess anything up. So this thing equals one over eight minus, no, wait, it's a plus sign, one over 24 log of two. No, it's not log two pi, it's log two. Then minus one quarter log of pi. And then we have three halves of the logarithm of another important constant. That is the, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It's a glacier's constant, glacier. It's also written as the glacier kinkling constant. Again, I am i don't know English, so I'm not sure how to pronounce any of this. Uh, it's just denoted by uppercase A. So yeah, three halves of log A. Please correct my pronunciation in the comment section. Anyway, so this is quite nice because we're subtracting all of this junk from log of g of one half. So that means we're, get, we're getting rid of the one over eight terms. And we're also getting rid of the negative one quarter of log pi terms. And we're only left with three halves of log a minus one over 24 log of two. And then we still have a one quarter of log two pi. Okay, cool. That looks interesting. And in fact, we could take this log two and log two pi log pi terms apart. And uh, you know what, I'll deal with that later. So that's the result for this integral. That is to say the integral from zero to one half of log gamma t dt. And of course, we're not done yet because I sub two was actually the result of the integral from zero to one minus this result we have up top. So we have one half of log two pi minus all of this junk. And wait a minute, we have one half minus a quarter. That should be one quarter, right? So we have a quarter of log two pi minus three halves of log a plus one over 24 times log two. Okay, cool. That is quite interesting. And now it's time to piece everything together to get the final result. So we are back to the target integral i, and now we just need to plug in the results for i sub 1 and 2. So we have 1 eighth of log 2 minus 3 eighths of log pi plus i sub 1. Now i sub 1 was negative 1 half of log 2 minus g over pi. Then i sub 2 was the result we just derived, so that's 1 quarter of log two pi minus three halves of log a plus one over 24 times log two. So all I have to do now is just collect the like terms. And now we have a log two pi somewhere. Oh yeah, over there. So this is now one quarter of log two plus one quarter of log pi. 
So when I'm factoring out the terms involving log 2, and that is to say I'm factoring out the log 2 terms, I have 1 over 8 minus 1 half plus 1 over 24. Then I have 1 quarter as well. This is all the log 2 stuff. And then the log pi stuff as well. So that is negative 3 eighths. And I also have a quarter. So that's 1 quarter of log pi. And then I'm only left with, oh yeah, negative 3 halves log a minus g over pi. So a pretty good looking result so far. And now for the difficult bit. That is to say, how the hell am I supposed to work out any of this now? Let me see. So 24. And this should be a 3 minus a 12 plus a 1. And plus a 6, right? So that's about 9 minus 12. That's negative 3 plus 1. That's negative 2. So negative 2 makes it negative 1 over 12 times log 2. And then over here, um, 2 over 8. So that's negative 1 over 8 times log pi minus 3 halves of log a minus g over pi. And that is the result for the target integral i. Absolutely brilliant looking result. Brilliant integral. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.